Good morning, everybody. I'm Bart Winkler. Paul Emig is here on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream. I'm going to be here in Grant Bills as if I don't notice the beautiful maroon polo you have on oh, today. Yeah. <clears throat> Repping UW lacrosse. We do three communicate via text message mm -hmm. at times. And I don't know how Paul feels about it, but sometimes Grant and I will just go carefree highway right down fucking third street. And it is, go it is beautiful. God. All across memories. There's one, there was one point not that long ago, a few months ago, as Grant has gotten to know me. I think Grant, you sometimes assume like, I just don't do sarcasm or certain types of humor. <laughs> you're just a very, you're just a very polite, Night. That's the image that we all have of you. And then sometimes yeah. you'll do something. I'll be like, Paul Barrar. <laughs> so it, it just depends. I had one of those moments earlier this week where you're like, I miss lacrosse. And I hit you with the Jim Carrey. Why don't you cry about it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was brutal. I wonder, if, I wonder if Grant appreciates the lack of seriousness in their reply. He's like, well, what, what a dick. Okay. Uh, there's um, so Grant. There's lacrosse. There, there's. There was a portion of Shorewood today where I went for a little walk. And there's like this ratty ass UPS store across the street from some nice apartments. And you can get like these pockets of this could be lacrosse. Mm. Like, this could uh Madison by the Steve. Mm -hmm. There's there's that there's walking. I was like, this could be. This could be lacrosse. Um, I'm 90 percent sure I've never been to lacrosse. Oh, it's a wonderful town. Like, because you not, would never go. But Bart's talked about this. You would not go on the way to there? anywhere. How else. do you get there? You drive northwest ish. It's the island from Lost. It is. You have to. You have to get there on crazy fate. It doesn't. You're saying it doesn't exist. No, and it moves constantly. <laughs> I'm I mean, saying the, the island from Lost did it did it exist? Yes. So we're we're going with that it was real. Yeah, but to get there, you had to. It was weird. To, you had to like dimensions and portals and darkness and light. And really, it was a God Lost. Fuck Lost was so fucking good until it, it got bad. I mean, except, in, except when it got bad, it was really good until it got bad. Interstate 90 passes directly through. Look, I mean, it's a very significant highway that does go through. But, yeah, but everybody always, if you go to the Twin Cities, everyone's always going, oh, going to go through Eau Claire. Well, yeah, because that's faster. That's what, because 94, yes, yes. Um, so if you're going to Rochester, yes, maybe. But that's really the only reason. If I just missed to, it. If you're going to Albert Lee, is that a town over there? Oh, yeah, don't act like you don't know. You're well aware of all those little towns. Every single one. Albert Lee, Houston. Fucking Caledonia, all of them, even on the Minnesota side. Don't act like you forgot. The one I spent a lot of time in, maybe we've talked about Rushford when it flooded mm -hmm. back in mm -hmm. 2007. Mm -hmm. I was the Rushford, like basically beat reporter. Of course, but you're on the. You're on oh, the was flood that one beat. of your like beats? <laughs> yeah. Oh, something yeah. happened in Rushford, Bart. All right. <laughs> and Bart's That's like, great. can I please just do sports? Like, you're not a sports guy, she said. I'm actually digitizing a lot of my old tapes and DVDs, and there is a WKBT flood special of 2007 that I'm going to put on YouTube when mm. when it's ready. That thing's going to do numbers. I, I don't get it. Them telling you you're not a sports guy is almost like it's almost a compliment to you. It's like we try. You have so much journalistic integrity. We need you focused on more serious things, which. Yeah, and again, I, you're capable. Don't get me wrong. It's just I, your zany whack pack approach. You know, zany, wacky, entertaining, knowledgeable. Those mm. things lend themselves to sports. I don't know if I want you covering. I don't know severe weather or other things. It's very odd. Your television. Bart, how many? Bart, how prominent in your origin story is that moment that the news director said you're not cut out for sports? Um. It, it's in the movie, right? That moment. Yeah. Like, only does it like? Because, does it, only like, because we never, she never liked me, and I always tried to like gain her favor, and to the point what? where I, I just came into her office one day and said, "I have a drinking problem," just to get some attention. <laughs> but for narrative purposes of the Bart Winkler movie, you would, 
play up the you're not cut out for sports moment. You play that up. You should. Yes, the real moment was going to a, I've talked about this, a carbon monoxide. Yes, incident that was the moment. Yeah, yeah. Where I said, I have to get out of this. But in the movie, it would have to be. Because then later in my career, I won the award for best show with Chuck. Mm-hmm. And our table was seated next to the old news station table. And so she got to watch me go and accept that award. Well, she was there? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I knew that part. That's actually you couldn't you couldn't script that way they say would say, but it would be a true part of it. Yeah, but I would play it up. Oh, for sure you would. Yeah. And then um what version of hey, shove this up your ass did you go with as you walked past her table? Uh I did and I just I I said hi, but then I like sat down and had medium length conversations with pretty much everyone at the table except for her. So I was like constantly in her fucking way. <laughs> like, Oh, if you didn't save you, if for some reason you didn't see me walk by, you get the award walk right by you. I am now carrying it on my person as I sit all across <laughs> your table and essentially eat this man's dinner. Is that the one that you then had everyone sign outside of uh, Fiserv that award? Yeah, I have it right over here. Okay, you do. Did Chuck ever get to mantle that, or did you always have it for yourself? You use mantle as a verb. I think you can mantle something. Yeah, a person. sexual. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait, Thank what? You. Did I miss something here? You can put no. something on a mantle. To mantle something is to fuck. I learned something new today. All right. Um, quickly. Uh, Answer my question, though. Did Chuck ever have it in his possession, or was it always yours? I brought it in once to let him touch it. <laughs> because let's face it, who really won that award? He got the other one. He There's another one he got. Oh, he did? Yeah, I got this one. Okay. And well, I'm sorry, remind me, who was the celebrity that almost signed it but was too high to sign it? Hannibal Burris. Hannibal Burris. Yes. No, I think he might have signed it. Did he? Now I have to look. But he wouldn't do a video with me. Oh, there was a video he was too, yeah. Because he was so faded. <laughs> he faded. was faded. Faded. That faded. seems like a Gen Z term, Grant. Faded? I, that one's a little old. <clears throat> Is it? I feel like that peaked. Well, when did Tyga have that song? That's not like when you all, when you young and say dead ass. No, uh, I'd say like faded is like 15 years ago now. When did that Tyga song? Yeah, 2012 is when that came out. For a little past, if we're describing being stoned, I really like the term boofed. Uh, <laughs> is that real? Yeah, like if you where boof does, a where joint, does, where does that originate from? What's the origin of the uh... I don't know. One of my college friends said it once, I thought it was funny. Um, yeah, like boofed when, is probably I like my when favorite. You're telling, I like when you're telling college stories, oh. you know, it's like if Bart tells a college story, it's like, oh, okay, so like a long time ago. And so I'm used to people like in my age bracket, like, oh, uh, hey, college. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, a long time ago. But your college stories are like recent history. I, I find that fascinating. Well, in the timeline of the internet, four years ago, five years ago can be a long time. Or like my early college years were like six years ago now, seven years ago now. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I get it. I get it though. I do. I do. Eight years, I guess. Jeez. I can't find it. <laughs> it's right here, he said. I think Chuck has it. Oh, no. It's on the... F- it's on the wall. Oh, that would okay. make sense. <laughs> you really couldn't find it, and then there it was. It's a, I have it hanging <laughs> up. Oh, Christ almighty. Oh, that's not good. Um, Some soccer team signed it. Aiden, number 64. Some soccer team? Like a random soccer team? Yeah, I don't know. Like a U12? Yeah. Where's HB, Hannibal Burris? I don't know. Name and Velasquez sign. I was going to say, I was going to say, I knew there was a couple media, Bucks media people. Yeah. My parents signed it. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I got Hannibal's. You have a, There's a brief video, though, right, of like you asking him to be. Yeah, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. There it is. Okay, so it exists. No, yeah. Hannibal's not on the video. Oh, he's not. But you're. But there's not one of you asking him. No. So you didn't capture the ask. Okay. All right. Well, now that we wasted all that time, <clears throat> I think that was not a waste. I enjoyed that detour. Um. This is into the Winkler verse. I am Bart Winkler. 
Paul and McGrant Bills. Quickly on Brazil, uh, people are already bitching about Peacock. That is so stupid. You don't have to. If you are in the Wisconsin market, it will be on your Green Bay and Milwaukee. Just Green Bay and Milwaukee? Yes. If you will, but also like Sheboygan and Fond du Lac because we get those channels. Appleton, yeah. Right. But not on Madison's TV stations don't get it. Oh, okay. You have to get Peacock. Oh, so even Madison? Okay. I, okay. Yeah, I yeah. Was... For, for WrestleMania, no, none of these people are bitching about Peacock. Mm. Paul, it was so fucking good, man. <laughs> I watched some of it. I watched it's... some of it. Even Grant watched it. I have I in-depth I have in-depth thoughts should you want to venture down this path. We can do that another time, but <laughs> we, could. we already did Hannibal Burris. How good could this podcast really get? Like I think we're gonna push it if we venture into WWE. I don't like that it's on a Friday because I have to work that Friday. I thought you were about to say because of the kids for high school football. And I'm like, let me go ahead and tell you to stop right there. And I am so and, excited. And there is no high school football that night, by the way. Of course, it's like week four of the high school. They started like August. Why did I? Why did I read someone that had mentioned like that? Okay, I'm. Uh, they might like Green Bay schools might be all like, oh, let's play Saturday at one o'clock. But then there was some, there was something I read. I uh, I don't want to miss Friday. It. Friday and Fox is doing this now. They're putting real college football games on Friday night, like high school. No college. College. Oh, okay, sorry. So Fox Fox TV, their weekend's going to be college college and NFL all weekend hmm. and there's been Friday night games obviously the Badgers have played and yeah. people get a good day out of content out of it and then it just kind of goes away worried about high school kids worried about recruits um, there's enough piece of the pie but also like the NFL should attack Fridays they should play on Friday nights they're gonna, play, they're gonna play Christmas on Wednesdays you know what Friday nights are fine yeah if you're playing on Christmas if you're like we're gonna play on Christmas you know how far you have to, like, how many people you have to pass over giving a shit about? You do not care about Friday night lights if right. you're playing on fucking Christmas. That's on right. On Wednesday. Yep. And that will be my lead tonight, folks. I'm okay with the first Friday of the season. I have zero interest in NFL games being on Friday nights henceforth from that night. Do I do don't mean, need football do you, on do Friday you, night. You don't need it, but you would take it. I don't want it. I don't want it because here's the thing, Paul and Bart agrees when it's on, I need to watch because every NFL game matters. Yes. For work, but also as like a fan of the league, mm -hmm. like it's not like, I can't just go do something when there's a game on. Cause they all, especially a standalone game. I don't want to have to set aside my entire Friday night, my entire Sunday, start to finish a Thursday Monday. It, it there does get to be a point where it's too much. So I'm, I'm down for the NFL doing the first Friday night. I think this is going to be awesome i think it's gonna look awesome it's gonna feel awesome everything about packers eagles and fucking brazil on a friday night is going to kick ass but i don't need it every other week after mm. that at all how many i like this question how many days consecutively could you watch the nfl before you like i just can't watch this one like if they were on friday saturday sunday monday tuesday I think I, I think it would take me a solid month before I was like, <laughs> fuck, I just, Wednesday night football is not happening for me tonight. I need to go to bed. I need to reconnect with my family. <laughs> my kid has a new wardrobe because he's up to 4T. I didn't pick mm. any of this shit out. Yeah. I think it would be matchup dependent. Like, I would skip the game. Like, if there was six nights in a row of football, you would pick the... I would pick the one or two nights of those six that I was least interested in the matchup, right? Like, it wouldn't be like, oh, it's a Wednesday, so I can't watch the game. I would say like, oh, like, I don't give a shit about these two teams, and so that's the night I'm going to take off, right? Isn't that the... But I would play fantasy, so... Uh, well, we you mean daily fantasy. Yeah, I would sink $15 a night into the daily fantasy. That's a you problem. Well, I've lost a lot of money in this new job because I always do a $15 NBA one for the game that's on when I'm on the show, and I always fucking lose. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we're excited about Brazil. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, Paul, I will now turn it over to you 15 minutes into the program. Let's go Bucks. 
I like this new premise, Bart, that you built. Not that it's rocket science, but I like this premise of like, you get a million dollars if you get this right. I like that. You know, because in the past I've done. No risk. There's We're no risk. Betting. You're not. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, would you, you, I used to say like, you'd bet your house if like, that's stupid, but I'd have a better way to do it. I like that. I need to force myself to make a take. I think pick one. Your life is on the line. If you get it wrong, everyone, you know, will die. <laughs> Way too morbid. Let's go with the million dollars. You get a million dollars if you get this right. The Bucks would win their first round series without Giannis. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Now, what I have not specified is like if they happen to play the Pacers or the Heat or the Sixers or like, but so you can answer it like in parts. Like, well, it depends on who the opponent would be and whatever else. But you get you get a million bucks if you correctly answer the question. The Bucks would win their first round series without Giannis. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Let me answer that by saying this. I want Giannis to be healthy. Oh, I shouldn't say never. Mm. I know what you're gonna should I say it? Should I say what you were going to say? I'm a little mm. let me let me let me you tell me how close I am. The Bucks are going to lose anyway. This is a healthy excuse, a yeah. get-out-of-jail-free card. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, they're not going to win the title. <laughs> <laughs> they never so, were. They never were. So at least you have this out. Yeah. So at least they have an out where we don't have to think about firing Doc and firing Horse and trading everybody, and they still may make some deals, but it can be more like – it doesn't have to be so panicky. Whatever happens this offseason – can be like natural instead of panicky. Everything would be, well, Giannis got hurt. What did you expect? But now this is also like the fourth year in a row there's some fucking injury. That happens when you're an old team, doesn't it? But everyone's so fucking bent out of shape about winning these regular season games. You're right. You're right. Let's just not keep score. Let's just fuck. There's there's only 82 of them. What does it really matter? Let's just Let's just go out there and... Let's do drills. Let's just, I, you need to win some of these the Bucks games. Beat the Celtics. Like, like uh, there's the a stat I heard, which is correct, is the Bucks are the only team this season to beat the Celtics by double digits twice. Mm. But how does that fucking matter? They're 15 games back. They're in a, you don't think, game. you don't, you don't think the vibes surrounding the Milwaukee Bucks, even with Giannis's injury are significantly improved today, considering where they were yesterday before this game happened. Uh, from a fan perspective. Okay. Well, you, you would, you would okay. take, you would take two weeks worth of regular season losses if it meant Giannis not being injured. Not that so, the two are exactly, I'm just, yeah. I, right now I am a strong believer <clears throat> of flip the switch. I am. Some teams have done that successfully they and so, do it every fucking year they they Michigan have State does it every year okay you can flip the switch but golden state is there's such an outlier in the example because they've just had so 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 many reps at it the bucks have not had that many reps at it and i think the couple times they've thought they could flip the switch they were unsuccessful in doing so including last season we have rewritten i have to jump in here we have rewritten the history of last season so much and i i don't know why i don't know how now everyone talks about last year as if well there were all these red flags going into the playoffs and i said this and i was worried about this and then we got to the playoffs and what happened i was as confident going into the postseason last year as i've ever been in the box and then Giannis got hurt and they dumped their pants against the heat. But it's not like we had three or four weeks of them like scuffling and not looking that great. Well, don't worry. They'll flip the switch. They were the one seed with a bullet. And I was amped about them last year. And then they got into the first round and it didn't work. So I, I, okay. I, have, to, I have to push back a little bit on the idea that they thought they could flip a switch last year. What switch? They were the one seed. They were really good. Well, I would say, and I have a question about Coach Bud here in a couple minutes. But I think we know that Coach Bud's philosophy, even if he didn't say it, he showed it was his philosophy, is like, game one, who gives a shit? I think Coach Bud believed in flip the switch, even if it was just on a series-to-series -series basis. 
he thought he could slow. I mean, he, he, he showed it, I think, consistently. Like, you know what? Game one, we'll just kind of figure things out. I would like to win game one, but it's more to figure things out. Like, that was his approach, right? So I, I, to me, that's him believing in, in a slightly different way, Grant, to your point of they were the number one seed. But I think he believed they could just wake up on Tuesday and say, okay, we dropped game one, but don't worry. We're going to now flip our switch. I, I think he thought that. I, I, don't think he, know. I think you showed that. I don't know that the result of last year's Heat series was a direct result of any like schematic or or ideological thing. I right. I think they got, and I hate to use this term because it's cliche, but it's true. They got punched in the mouth really hard in game one and Giannis got hurt. And I, I think all of them, because they had experienced a, a loss to the Heat early on in the playoffs before, like they, they just tightened up and they dumped their pants in the worst possible way. I don't think there's a lot of, precedent or usable material from last year's postseason. Honestly, I, I don't right, and I, I think if you go ahead. So I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to the original question I asked, but I had three follow-up questions to this and this is just a perfect transition to Jesus them. Jesus Christ. Don't they're they're all relatively quick. They're all, they're all relatively quick, but don't but don't jump the gun on each of them. If you could, you would hit the reset button on firing Coach Bud. I had three follow-up questions. Three follow-ups. They're all they're all related, so don't jump the other two because um, um, I don't know about that because something needed to change. But looking back, maybe it didn't, but we thought it did. So 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 you would hit the reset button on firing Coach Bud, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm, Bart. I'm gonna I would rather have Coach Bud of all the options right now. Okay, so mm-hmm, you would hit the reset button. Apparently, I would. Grant, mm-hmm, or mm-mm, you'd hit that reset button on Coach Bud. Mm-hmm, really quickly, because wow. something needed to change. But Dame, that's what, what? changed. Did but they didn't know that was coming. Did exactly. I? And and one more thing. Very. I'm not trying to take all the time, Paul. Mm-hmm. I also don't really accept all of the basketball NBA media who are like, well, they never should have fired Bud. Bullshit. Everyone for two years in the postseason was like, Bud is killing this team. They need to fire him. And then they it. fire him. And Adrian Griffin isn't immediately amazing. And they're like, oh, never should have fired Bud. I don't know where that stupid idea came from. Whoever, yeah, no whoever thought that was each other on the way that it worked. <laughs> All right. That's so you're going to, so I'm going to say I would mm-mm, not hit the reset button on firing Bud. I know I needed that. I know that about myself. It has not worked out since then, but I have a follow up. As I mentioned, there's two more coming and you'll see where I'm going with this. The, so let's go God to the next one. Let's, let's, let's go chronological order here. Um, you would hit the reset button to the to the weeks leading up to hiring Adrian Griffin, and you would hire Nick Nurse. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. You would have overrode Giannis's reported. No, I, I just fucking hired Doc. Okay. So you'd rather have Doc right now than Nick Nurse, and you're admitting the fact that you're wrong about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're wrong, but you're entitled to your opinion. Well, do you factor in the Yannick's extension part of this? Because I that, don't. That, that's he a, was that, fucking that, signing anyway. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I do, I don't want to dismiss that because guys, I don't know if you know this, but I saw him at swimming. Tell the story for the first time, would you? <laughs> he wasn't there last night. He was busy getting his fucking sobriety muscle. What was it called? Sobius? Is it Solus or Solius? I don't know which. Grant, <laughs> you'd hit the reset button to the weeks leading into the coaching hiring process and you would hire Nick Nurse mm-hmm, or mm-mm. Mm-hmm, unless it was absolutely a non-starter for Giannis which mm-hmm. you know I, I am 100% here to say that yes Adrian Griffin was not the right hire but I don't know if Nick Nurse was on the board because Giannis didn't want him so I, I don't know exactly how stern he was on that and that's why it's like even if let's just play out the timeline because it does fall into reason and the logic of the timeline that Giannis signed the extension after Adrian Griffin was hired. There is a very real possibility that he doesn't do that when he did it. Maybe he still does it eventually, Giannis that is, but it's it's possible that he was feeling empowered by the coaching decision and his ability, Giannis's ability to help inform that decision that if even if Nick Nurse was like a better choice, how much did like Giannis pick the coach? I feel like that's a lot of. I think I think Giannis picked who's not the coach, and I and reportedly that was Nick Nurse. And who reported that? I'd have to go back and somebody. I like we all just. Assumed. No, 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 no. There, there was no. There were 
sourced reports of that Giannis. Uh, no, there were a couple reports. I've also like I've you, talked to Bucks people too who have all echoed that. So I, I think that's I don't know that he demanded Adrian Griffin more so is that he did not want Nick Nurse. And then I so think so much about board. this process and Adrian Griffin that, like I said the other day, I don't know what is on the record and what was off. So I just say it all. I it is. Know. It is. <laughs> I heard you say that, actually. What the all right. So let's go to the third piece of the puzzle. So we have sort of mixed results. You guys would even though, Bart, you were surprised to hear yourself think it or say it. You would go back and not fire Bud. Which of course if we knew we were getting Dame. I would keep Bud. Well, but you, but you can't. That's not you can't do that, right? Um, now let's go back to the the Lillard trade. You would go back in time, hit the reset button, and not do the Lillard. No, that's trade. flat out ridiculous. Mm-mm. I'm with Bart. So so am I. So we are in conclusion that we at this point we're like, uh, this is where I was wondering if we, where we were going to like fragment and break, but like so we all agree a hundred times out of a hundred. You do the Lillard trade, right? So, mm-hmm, yes. on this. Yes. However, yes. Bart, you point this out from a national perspective, TM, that th- they are paying three coaches, and it's really embarrassing. Like, it's a really bad optic. You can't. You can. I mean, you look. pay three and get made fun of, but if you pay fourth, like you should, that you the franchise should be playing in Seattle. Ugh. Like if you're so stupid that you're that was paying, that, that that possibility was too real to joke about. So let's not. If you're that dumb that you're paying four coaches. And are they? Is Terry Stott still getting a paycheck, or did he just fucking quit? If if he quit, which he reportedly did, what was all that shit about? Why would we bring him in in the first place? So that he Why could we just hire him. So he could Why te- we just fire Griff and hire Stotts after we got Dame. Yeah. I mean, would it be it, embarrassing? It'd be embarrassing. Is it more embarrassing to fire a coach at zero and zero or thirty and thirteen? What's more embarrassing? Yeah. Well, uh, they're, they're, they're both fucking so far past the line of embarrassing that there is no wrong answer. I love the premise that you could fire a coach at zero and zero because you realize like four weeks in that it was a mistake, <laughs> or you're like, well, actually, to be fair, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a mistake using air quotes because it would be well, we didn't. And Adrian Griffin said this after he was fired. The, the team didn't know that they were going to get Damian Lillard. It's a totally different team that he's being asked to coach. Well, totally different is a stretch. Well, there's so like, many jobs that don't give you – they don't give you, like, insurance or anything until a 90-day grace period to make sure they didn't fuck up with hiring you. He Adrian Griffin hit his 90 days. Uh, not a lot more. All right, so – go to a college class where you went the first class and said, well, I'm dropping this fucking class. <laughs> I've done, I did I never, it three times. I never did. Oh, it's the best. I don't think I did that. I don't think it's so. like, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I'll sit here. I'll sit here and finish. Cause by the time I get out, I have to go all the way back home. And then I have another class coming up. So I might as well just stay on this side of campus. This is as good a place to sit and kill 55 minutes as any other place. Yeah. yeah. Might as well just sit and look at my phone, which at the time I just played snake on my Nokia. Man, snake was so good. So let's run through, let's run through them again real quick. You'd hit the reset button on, uh, on firing bud. Mm-hmm. I said, Mm-mm, I would still fire Bud. You guys said, Mm-hmm. you know what? Let's go back to that moment. Let's just keep Bud. Uh, you'd go back, hit the reset button, and just forgetting Giannis's feelings, you would have hired Nick Nurse? No. See, that's how you were. You were to, you changed the wording now at the final presentation. Okay, now sorry. we're at the altar. You changed the wording. Okay, so you, you hit the reset button. and wait. I, I want to no part of Nick Nurse at all. And I, and I didn't I, either you at did, the time, and, to be fair. And and you and you were both wrong. I loved Nick Nurse. Were we? Oh, I'm check the tape. Look, just because just, Griffin just check the doesn't, tape. doesn't mean that Nick Nurse was about to be Vince Lombardi. Like that's come on. Nick Nurse is brilliant. It's unfortunate that he's not the coach. But the unknown, he's no he's no Eric Spolster. Don't get me wrong. I, I was gonna say okay, okay. Well, no, uh, frame a reference. But 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 I acknowledge the tribal chief. I mean, I acknowledge the fact that. <laughs> I acknowledge the fact that Giannis's extension may not have happened in the Nick Nurse like multiverse. Sure. Like, sure. Sure, sure, sure. so I think I would not go back and do that differently. I never acknowledge the tribal chief. And then we all agree you would still do the Dame trade. You know what's you know what's scary though, and this is where it's like three guys who love the Bucks, who follow the Bucks, who know the Bucks in and out. What percent of 
and Bart, I know these are your people now. What percent of national media would go back and redo the the Dame trade? I think at least half would say, "Oh, you, oh, you definitely not do yeah, that." Yeah, seventy percent of people wanted to said it lost when Drew went to the Celtics. But like, ask. I mean, I think this is relevant because of Giannis's injury. Ask that question tonight. Like, I know you're not going to talk to I'm going like, to stay off the Bucks tonight. Hmm. I'm talking about the Packers instead. With Brazil. Oh, the Brazil thing. Okay. So let's and Brewers, because there is a bit of news. Uh, friend of show, Jefferson Cuero. Jeff- Caro, right? Chuck Grant? Caro? <laughs> I'm not the... Not the You're the one who had Jefferson. You got to at least know it's if it's Caro. He, or- is, he is undergoing season-ending shoulders. So oh, right. no. Yeah. It's a good thing they retained Eric Haas. Didn't think he'd sneak through, but they were able to keep him in the system. Also, Wade Miley is back. And visually, when I saw that news, my brain started playing that scene from Infinity War when Thor comes flying in. It's like one of the greatest movie moments mm. out of the sky. Mm. I have a I have a 97-3 the game complaint. Sure, yeah. Natural transition, go ahead. My guy, who I haven't talked to since the station went away, Bill and Iron River called the post game show that first day. And he said something about Eric Haas and drew like ran him off the air and laughed at him. Cause he was talking about Eric Haas after a loss. What po- post game show when Tim joined. Oh, oh, okay. When, when they we, do that crossover thing. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. And Bill and Iron River wasn't saying we lost this game because of Eric Haas. He just, had a question that had not been answered from anybody about the, that decision. And he, he had a question about it and he got made fun of and I didn't like it. Hmm. And I almost text the toll free smorgasbordus text line or whatever the fuck it is. I they hate, are I hate, sons. I hate the term talking text line. I won't call it that. I don't, I don't like it. It's what just, does it mean? I actually don't know what that. What does that mean? Not to say that it's a crutch, but it. I just. You can text and call the show. Here's the number. But the text line sponsored. Well, yeah. Well, if it's sponsored. Oh, yeah. Well, now I'm showing my my amateurism. Of course, if it's sponsored. Okay, then yeah. Then it's yeah, amateur. Grant. They're not big on interacting and engaging with callers always on that program. Well, if you're, gonna take that caller, if you're going to take. It's like, let's take a caller, but then get him off in 20 seconds and don't take yeah. the call. There's no point. I agree. Either you're a caller you show or you're break, not. Use the cough button. If you're going to take a call, take a call. It's, a, it's also don't something. Don't take a call and say, get the fuck out of here. Why? They also why calling? sometimes struggle with the cough button from three to six. <laughs> well, one thing I know they do, uh, and I will, and I will support them. What they do at 420 is they make sure to shout out my guys at Happy Place Hemp. The promo code is Drew and KB, but I would use Bart uh, instead. Please, God. Tim, promo code Bart, 25% off each and every order. Gummies, tinctures, lip balms. Maybe I'll maybe I'll uh, partake this weekend. Oh, I got to have another seltzer. That thing, that thing accelerates. <clears throat> HC, you take a gummy. You, you take a gummy, you can like... All right, I can plan for where I'm going to be sitting when this when this gummy starts to feel when I start to feel the gummy with the seltzer. That that accelerated. That was by the time I got in my Uber to that game, I was. <laughs> so uh, how long have you been driving? Is this do you did you invent cars? What do you think about the natural speed of? Uh, they work. Uh, the THC infused, which they combined with 1840 Brewing to make those seltzers. You can get them happyplacehemp.com. Those are also available at Ray's Liquor in Tosa, and you can check them out in Muskego Happy Place Hemp. What else you got? Chief? Well, so let, let's just let's just we never really did answer million bucks if you get this right. The Bucks oh, yeah. would would win their first round series without Giannis. Their choices, I think, are the Pacers, the Heat, and the Sixers. So is your your answer can be opponent dependent if you'd like it is they will lose to either the knicks or the sixers when they wouldn't play the knicks well i guess they the two teams they would lose to they would lose to the knicks and the The knicks i know i know grant i'm with you but 
There's why a, do we a little more than that? Why do we have to keep up this Knicks charade? Why? Because they're because they're the Knicks. They're not a serious title contender. No, they correct. never are. But never. they are better than you and I want to give them credit for right now. Sure, they're a re- no. They're a solid team. They're a, they're a they're a solid team. And, and, right, right, and you, think, actually, you think the Knicks like get them. out of the first round? You think the Bucks get out of the first? Or the, the Knicks get out of the first round? Who are they going to play? The Magic? Yeah, no, the Magic are going to play the Cavs. But neither of those teams should even fucking be in. With all Magic dude. are good. Right now, the yeah. Knicks the Knicks would play the Pacers. So yeah, they. Ooh, I don't know. No Julius. Oh, Rand- Knicks, no no Knicks, Julius Randle. Knicks will, Knicks will beat the Pacers in no more than five games. Yeah, five. Pacers yeah. are no unserious. Matherin. No Matherin's a big deal for them. Uh, the Sixers, hello, they were a top three team. I think I just think Quentin Grimes has been really good recently for the Knicks. Um, I think Hartenstein as the starter has been really good for the Knicks. I'm a big Miles McBride fan. All right, sorry, that was very inside. Okay, that was funny. I got I me mean, Stephen A. Smith. I got a kick out of it. Yeah, it wasn't funny as much as it was just trying to throw shade. Just oh, I didn't that story. I didn't. I didn't see it. Uh. Stephen A. Smith. Uh, the moment's passed. Tim, just go ahead. Cut the whole out. section is fine. Uh, so Tim, okay, so, this one at like two in the morning, so no one sees it. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So go through. So the Bucks would, without Giannis, you said, would lose to the Knicks. Who would uh, they? Also- they'll probably beat the Knicks. They'll beat the Knicks. Well, they won't play the Knicks, so we can. We don't. We don't have to go too far down the. All right. Well, they would beat the pace. They would beat the Heat in six. Uh, they would beat the Pacers in six. They would lose to the Sixers in five. Wow, Grant, what's it? What what say you? I mean, I, if you're telling me I bet a hundred a million dollars, you're not betting honest, anything, but you're but a million. I stand. I stand to win. I stand, stand to win a million dollars. A yes, little sir. no country for old men flavor. I need to know what I stand to win or stand to lose. I stand to win a million bucks, and I'm probably. Not going to get Giannis for all of it, or maybe he's not all of it. He, no, he's out. He's out for all. It's the whole series. I would kick myself more for picking the Bucks and losing than I would picking against the Bucks and losing. Uh, do the thing that you would least regret, yes. right, Bart? Yes. Is that the golden rule? So I will in that in this little make made up world. I will pick against the Bucks. You would you would pick against the Bucks? Yeah, I I would pick the other, and I don't even know that it matters. I don't think the opponent met the Sixers, the Heat, the Pacers. They all present different challenges, but I, I don't think the team matters. It's would, either the Bucks have it or they don't. And in this bet, I have to say that the Bucks don't have it, so I don't even really care. Who yeah, I think if you, I think if you can't pick the opponent and you have to just take the possibility of Indiana or Philly or um, who are the other Indiana? It could technically be Cleveland. They're only a full game back with three to go from being in that play in Miami. I'm with Grant. Um, you know, get a million if I'm right, nothing if I lose. Unfortunately, yeah, I think they would in that scenario, I think they would lose their first round series. Um, this is this is just unfair to Bart because a million really isn't that big of a deal for no. someone who's a nationally no, no. syndicated radio. <laughs> no, so the stakes really aren't there for him the way that they are. For I guess you know what? The, my mistake was thinking that this was still my mistake was thinking this was still 2023. You know, when Bart was only making a cool half mil on the pod. Yeah. Uh bi-weekly, half mil bi-weekly. Um, so so I should have up so 10 million. Because that well, 20, I don't know what would really change the well, that changes every yeah. What is life changing money for Bart Winkler? This, <laughs> this is bucks. <laughs> this is yeah. Uh well, I mean 60 listen, I'd take 60 bucks. Holy balls. All right. Um, I think it, I'd pick against him, yeah. Here's my my national topic, but it's the one I was. We just had to go steal money out of my kid's wallet to put in the bank yesterday to be able to pay a check that we forgot we wrote. Was that to put toward the brewer's suite that you ordered? <laughs> it was not. Oh, that was just cash. That was straight cash. All right. Bear with me on this topic. It's a nationally focused topic, but I'm super excited to ask it. And it was triggered through a conversation that I heard on the Bart Winkler show uh, between nine and one, 9 PM to 1 AM central nighttime and nationwide, correct nighttime and nationwide 40 year old LeBron James would be, I stole this from someone. 
you, wait, you've you've asked what I'm about to ask you. You don't know yeah. what I'm about to ask you, but I okay. I if you if if yes, I've not heard you ask it. Oh no, I stole. Okay, go ahead. Forty-year-old LeBron James, or will he be thirty-nine? Would be the number one pick in the 2024 NBA draft. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Now let me just—you're the Pistons, you're the Wizards. Clearly, one year of LeBron isn't turning your. Now let me tell you why I asked the question. If LeBron, who's going to be a free agent, the presumption is he's going to re-sign with the Lakers, but it's LeBron. He doesn't need the money. He can do whatever he wants. Essentially, what I'm asking is, Bronny goes one because you get LeBron. You could think Bronny's awful. He's a fourth-round pick in a draft that has two rounds, but it doesn't matter because you're the lowly Pistons or Wizards, and you know that drafting Bronny, who you think is your 13th man, means you get LeBron for a year and whatever else. So therefore, I ask you, LeBron James would be the number one pick. Now, keep in mind, this is a non-Wemby draft, right? Like, it's a not, this is not like a generational. Now, someone will be picked eighth overall and be an all-pro or like an all-pro, like an all-NBA guy, but there's not the Wemby. So, LeBron James at his current age would be the number one pick in the 2024 NBA draft. Mm-hmm. Even or, if you didn't have all this behind you and like there was just some 40 year old guy that got discovered and it was he was as good as LeBron James, would he go one? And but you, you'd be thinking, well, he's 40, and then be like, here's LeBron. I would be a GM thinking, well, I'm going to get at least probably three years out of this guy, and I know he's going to be awesome. I'm drafting this fucking guy. Uh, yeah, I would take LeBron one. Absolutely. Grant. Absolutely. Grant. Mm-hmm. Even if it wasn't like the LeBron that sells tickets, because you don't know, because I'm just saying, if there was just some 40 year old guy discovered, the- and then we watched him and he was this good, yeah, and you're, and you're like, fuck, this guy's 40, huh? Well, I mean, we're not going to get him for 10 years, but what happens to a lot of these guys they draft? They're out of the league in two or they're on a new team in a year and a half. Yeah. So, yeah, you can have like your Kevin Knoxes of the world in the top 10, but I'm going to take fucking LeBron James. Like if Jokic came over at age 39 from playing overseas basketball, and he's like, you know what? Before I retire, I want to get one crack at the NBA. You're like, I'll all right. It. Yeah. He's 39. He's okay, Grant. Mm-hmm, or mm-mm, that current age LeBron would be the number one pick in this year's NBA draft. Mm-hmm, or mm-mm. Do you guys buy into him saying that he doesn't have that much time left? I buy I buy nothing he says, literally. Okay. Okay. Maybe I buy, I, maybe... into, I buy into him saying a very obvious thing that people say. People keep asking old people when they're going to retire, which is <laughs> yeah. so fucking stupid because they give you an answer that's like well, I'm closer to the end than the beginning. And everyone's like, oh my Perfect. God, I never fucking thought of it. Like John Sterling was asked this with the Yankees, the play-by-play guy. Oh my God, I never thought about it. Like if somebody asked Euchre, are you, and he said, I'm closer to the end than the beginning. And you'd be like, whoa, oh, we got to, like someday Euchre's not going to be calling base. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't even imagine. Yeah, we, we like stop asking people when they're going to, why are we so quick to, that, that question needs to go away. When are you mm. going to retire? How about you just fucking enjoy me while I'm here? <laughs> and stop making the retirement thing a fucking distraction like when am i gonna retire i want to retire every goddamn day i wake up and i'm sore <laughs> when am i gonna fucking retire podcast bart is the key and peel sketch of what obama wanted to say and then national radio show host bart is what obama actually said in the key and peel sketch i did say the word horny last night i thought that you- was a that was a Rubicon cross. I, I caught that. <laughs> I did say horny. I missed that. I no, it was that. the one where Bart said his his old email address used to be like horny Wisco boy 15 at AOL.com. <laughs> yeah. Why did you make it that? It was actually sexy Medusa 13 at hotmail.com. For real, that was your real email address. Yeah, for a while I was calling myself the sexy Medusa. <laughs> what does that even mean? Medusa's like some weird Egyptian god or some I'm shit. A, goddess. We're aware of who. I just was. I didn't know when I said it. I was wondering why you felt of yourself as being Medusa in this scenario, and sexy Medusa at that. I think she's Greek, also Greek mythology. I, I just, how many years would LeBron need to play for your team for you to make this pick? That's what I'm wondering. You wouldn't. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Three. I think three. So I guess my question, because I don't really have a good mm-hmm or mm-hmm answer. My question is, do you think LeBron is going to play three more years? Cause I don't think he is. I do. I, I think I, so. I think he'll, yeah, I, I would, if, well, 
I think if the over I thought you were going to say was how long can LeBron play? At what age is he no longer a top 40 player? I don't think he'll ever be bad. I don't think he'll ever play so long where he's bad. Well, I don't top, think you he'll don't, get you don't, to that point. If you're the four, uh, to use Bart's example, the 41st best player in the league, you're still not bad. No, like, I think he, I think, I think he'll be top 40 for the next three years. Yeah, so I'd draft that. That makes sense. Okay, fine. And I then, also the yeah. the Bronny like I was listening to Cowherd and Nick Wright earlier today. They're doing like ten minutes on Bronny James, and I, I just think it's gross. I don't like ty- he's a he's a kid. He's no, he's a child. not. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Paul, Come he's a young. On. He's, he's a youngin, but he's not a child. Think of think of your mental state and your life. And oh God. I actually don't know what your life was like. Your first year at college. Mm. You know what I mean? Just I I was. Crazy. I was screaming into a microphone. That's what I was doing. Oh yeah, that's right. You went to the school of hard knocks. Yeah. I um I was walking up and down Pine Street looking for people that were throwing parties in their backyard because I thought that's how you fucking found parties. You just walked around <laughs> until you oh, found there's a party here. The the end of my freshman it was year of college. 87 degree night. We were walking around for hours the first Friday of college. Oh my god. And you were doing what? Throwing acorns into the backyard? Uh, we were just looking for parties. You just congregated the Taco Bell parking lot. That's where, that's what we did my first weekend in college. Then we hung out with like the basketball house for the first two weeks, which was so fucking weird. And then you're like, we don't belong here. I think they determined that. <laughs> the basketball team did. <laughs> yeah. Does a, UW, does a UW lacrosse basketball team have a lot of clout on campus? More than they should. Yeah. Um, I mean, my I, opinion. I thought it was cool. Yeah, but think back now on that and like how silly that that is. First of all, now I need to defend them. Don't shit on the WIAC. It's a good conference. I'm just I'm just saying that like you could run the campus like that. You're like, no, I, you can't. I, you can't run the campus. But they I, pull I play the cross hoops. Huh? They they pull a surprising amount of tail more than you'd think. Where it's like, oh, you just need to play Division three basketball and you can you can really do some damage. It's impressive. Well, they're also taller, so they appear older and more sophisticated. Mm. But they're not that tall, though. Like I had classes with them all. They're not. They're not. It's not like they're six. Yeah, six. But, but 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 you're tall. You're very tall. So this is not daunting to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm taller than you guys, but I'm not very. You're not tall. one of us short little five foot trolls. You're like six four. I am not six four. How tall are you? Be honest. I don't, I don't measure myself. I don't know. Six two. Well, I am five ten and a half, and I think that is the perfect height for an American male. <laughs> and you know, who would, you know who would say that? A short person, <laughs> someone who's five ten and a half. Yeah. What were you gonna say? I don't want to be six feet. That's fucking too high. Why? <laughs> then you gotta start looking where you're going and shit. <laughs> How big do you think doors anywhere. are in this country? How how big do you think door frames are in this country? I never had to care. Well, <laughs> Nobody which, does. Nobody. Guys, Zach Eady does, and that's it. Did you guys see Zach Eady duck under the door with that young lady? Mm-hmm. No. He probably did some more ducking throughout that evening. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it was humorous. I have All five right. minutes to chat with you boys. All right. Um, so, yes. Mm, so, Grant, mm-hmm, on LeBron would go one in this year's draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So Bronny is going to play. I don't think he's going to play that much longer. You guys do. So I'll meet you in the middle and just say, yeah. If the over under was two years more of LeBron Grant under you take under two. Wow. I thought you said two and a half. Oh, I didn't. But OK. But you, OK, two, two. You, so you basically need to play two more years. I think he's going to play this this year and maybe two more. Yeah, this as in the current. Oh, you league. know what he's going to do? LeBron's got a he's going to Roger Clemens this shit. He's going to like only play home games one year Oh, or he's going to like say I'll play, but I am hurt until, I don't know, January 19th. Mm. All right. All right. Last one. I'm not exactly sure how to ask this. If you could only see your favorite band one more time live or your favorite band is the only band you'll ever get to see live again. So you get your favorite artist, group, band. It, it, I don't think this is a good. I, I don't think this is a good one for me. Could you bring back a dead? Could you? No. Well, because no. then the no, that wouldn't work. I want. So, I needed to see Neil, and I fucked that up. 
he came to Summerfest pretty much every other year for a long time. I am going to see Death Cab in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I think it'll only be my third time seeing Death Cab. Maybe only my second. I don't even know. I didn't I, see it once, I know. I think if I died at this moment in time, I've seen everybody that I will have, would have like needed to see. Like if I never went to another concert ever again, I think I'm, I'm okay. You guys will think I suck for this because uh, of a movie ruining them 20 years ago, but I want to see Coldplay. Coldplay's which, good. Which movie ruined Coldplay? 40 year old virgin. Ah, sure. Coldplay's good. That's a good take. I love Coldplay. I'm gonna Coldplay's listen. very good. Yeah. I'm you know listening. what though? The first song I knew of them was yellow and yellow is dog shit. Yellow was a fucking credible. And that was 25 years ago. I'm just, it was the first song I knew of them. And I just teased that song. Cause it was so dumb. <laughs> wow. Okay. It was all yellow. I just heard it again the other day. I swear to you. I heard it again the other day on the radio and it like sometimes you have to start listening to the lyrics Paul could never. This is our disconnect here. Sometimes the lyrics... You, you, you know I wrote lyrics. Yeah, but they were lyrics to... Yeah, but come on. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's just screams, Paul. It screams. That's what you I, listen to. Yelling and screaming. That's not true. I'm exaggerating to make a point, but it's more true than it's not true. It's closer to 100% truth than 100% lying. All right, yeah, so like, that's, you that's, had to know there's better words to scream. Sure. I'm sure there's levels. There's degrees, but. Like, what's a good screaming word? Obviously, fuck. Alone. Leave me alone. That's a good one. That was yelling. You got you to gotta, you gotta work on the art of the scream there, Bart. You can't be like, oh. you can't be like if you could read my mind. If you could read my mind. That doesn't work. I don't like who redid We Didn't Start the Fire. I don't think it's good. Oh, boy. Oh, that song. They, I'm so pissed about that. <laughs> you can't fucking do that. I agree. I agree. All right. So, Grant, you would see, you, you would just choose to die, you said, and you wouldn't. <laughs> no, I don't know why I brought death into it. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, choose death. I, I don't know. Grant, I you would see your favorite band only instead of, or you can see a diversity of bands or you can perish. I don't have an act in my life that I would like be torn up if I could only see them one more time. Like of all my favorite bands, if you told me this is the last time I'd be like, okay, I've got a, I've got a couple in. So I, I would take the former option and not the latter, but good question, Paul. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the diversity, the sports and stuff today. Thank you. I'm the same, by the way, I would rather the, the diversity. Yeah. If I, everyone, if I only see them one more time, okay. Okay. And great. If you could, if you could only see one more band twice, who would that band be that you get two more cracks at, but you never get two cracks at any other live performing artist, band, group? Uh, probably either Mayor or the band that I saw last week in Milwaukee. They're Brooke and the Bluff. I'm a big Brooke fan of them. And the Bluff. Big I was going to say the Broom and the Boat. I forgot what they were called. The, you like the Brooke goose and the Bluff. Or, is it Goose or Geese that you like? Goose. But Geese is pretty good, too. Was there but is Gander up and coming? <laughs> is they, or did they only were they a one hit wonder? Do you think Goose and Geese though are pissed at each other? Like, because those are literally two different bands I've learned in the past couple months. I'm not sure. I wonder if they communicate. It's like when I was in Remember the Day, we were pissed that there was a day to remember. It was like, hey, what the fuck? Well, then pick a better name, Paul. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, first off, I didn't come up with the name. Second off, we had it first. Okay, All right, well, I need to you. leave. I need to go. All right, goodbye. See you later, guys. I goodbye, appreciate fellas. both of you being here and everyone being here. I thank you. I got a, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Mm-hmm. Bye. Oh fuck. Hey. All right. See ya. <laughs>